Well, hello and welcome to Cord Cutting Weekly for Friday, December 11th, 2020. It has been a busy, busy week indeed in the world of streaming, and if last week was dominated by HBO Max news, well, I think it's safe to say that Disney may have taken that crown this week. But first, yes, if you're new to the channel, please do consider clicking those like and subscribe buttons down below. You'd be joining an active and passionate community, and we'd certainly appreciate it. But without further ado, let's just jump into the news, shall we? Starting with a whole lot of Disney news. First up, Disney is launching a second bundle option for those looking to grab Disney+, Plus, Hulu, and ESPN+, Plus as one package. Now, the existing bundle includes a subscription to Hulu with limited ads for a total of $12.99 per month. And this new bundle option swaps in the ad-free Hulu plan for a combined price of $18.99 per month. If you're doing the math, getting all three separately would cost you around $24.97 per month. So yes, the bundle does represent a cost savings if you're into all three services. And Disney says the new bundle with the ad-free Hulu is expected to be available sometime in January of 2021. Speaking of monthly prices, Disney also announced price hikes for its Disney Plus streaming service and the original Disney Bundle. Disney Plus itself jumps by $1 to $7.99 per month, while the bundle, including ESPN Plus and the ad-supported Hulu, jumps to $13.99 per month. The price increases are expected to start on March 26, 2021. Next up, after HBO Max's big announcement last week about Warner Brothers Films heading straight to streaming in 2021, a lot of industry eyes were on Disney to see if that mega company would follow a similar path. Well, at its Investor's Day event yesterday, the company outlined its plans for new shows and movies over the next few years. And that includes 10 Marvel series, 10 Star Wars series, 15 Disney and Pixar series, and 15 Disney and Pixar features. And indeed, some titles are expected to release both in theaters and on Disney Plus at the same time. And that includes the upcoming Raya and the Last Dragon, which is set to premiere in March of 2021. Meanwhile, Soul, which was initially set for a theater release, will instead head straight to streaming as part of a new line of Disney Plus originals. And in still more Disney news, the company also announced that ESPN Plus content will be made available directly within the Hulu app starting early next year. In other words, new and existing ESPN Plus users won't have to fire up the separate ESPN Plus app to access that sports-focused content. Meanwhile, Disney also announced a new deal between ESPN and the SEC that spends 10 years and starts in the year 2024. Part of that deal includes ESPN Plus getting the rights to stream one non-conference football game and two non-conference men's basketball games per SEC school each season. And we have still more news coming from Disney's four-hour-long Investor's Day presentation, and you can catch all the latest over on our news website, corecuttersnews.com. In acquisition news, this week saw the announcement that AT&T will sell its anime streaming service Crunchyroll to Sony-owned Funimation. Now, there have been rumors of this deal swirling for several weeks now, and we reported on the possibility back in October. At that time, AT&T was reportedly asking for around $1.5 billion for the streaming service. However, this week's official announcement puts the final figure at a cool $1.175 billion. And the deal represents a major move in the anime industry. Crunchyroll has more than 3 million paid subscribers as of July of this year, with around 90 million registered users. Of course, we'll continue to track the impacts of this deal moving forward, so keep an eye on corecuttersnews.com for all the latest. And in some homegrown news, it is December, which means it's time for our readers and viewers to help us determine our year-end awards, aka the Cordy Awards. You'll find a link down below in the video description where you'll be able to weigh in with your top choices in several categories, including the best new streaming device of the year, the best free streaming service, the best original content, and a whole lot more. Voting is open right now and will close at 9 p.m. Eastern on Sunday, December 13th. So if you want to share your thoughts on this year's best of the best, you'll find that link down below in the video description. Meanwhile, Amazon announced a new look is coming to its lineup of Fire TV devices. The new user experience is meant to be more personalized and more intuitive and features updates like a revamped home screen and main menu bar. In the update, that main menu bar resides in the middle of your screen and you'll get big content art up top and a standard grid of tiles below. As for the bar itself, you'll see options for the find or search menu, your library, live content, and more. And you'll also see smaller icons for direct access to key apps. And up to six household members can create their own accounts, and the company promises deeper integration with its Alexa service as well. 
and it looks like Amazon will be phasing in this update over time. It'll start arriving on the new 3rd gen Fire TV Stick and the brand new Fire TV Stick Lite over the coming weeks. And odds are we'll see the updated UI pop up on other devices at a later date, although Amazon didn't have specifics available at the time we were recording. In the meantime, we're hoping to get some hands-on time with the new interface and offer up some first-hand impressions of the changes sometime in the near future. For now though, if you're among those who already have access to the update, feel free to share what you think so far in the comment section down below. And if you've been looking for more free streaming options to choose from, Redbox is happy to oblige. The company announced it's adding on-demand TV shows and movies to its current ad-supported streaming service. The company launched its free live TV service back in February, and now it's adding an on-demand component to its arsenal. Redbox says you can expect hundreds of movies and shows to choose from, and it'll be adding more to the list over time. And you can check out the selection via the company's app. You should see a new tab called Free On Demand, where you can access new on-demand content without a sign-on. And if you do peruse the current on-demand catalog, feel free to share what you think so far in the comment section down below. Moving on, one of last week's big announcements was undoubtedly that HBO Max would start premiering new Warner Brothers releases on the same day as their theater debut. And we're still seeing the impacts of that announcement and what it could mean in the long term, especially for the movie theater industry. And perhaps unsurprisingly, some movie makers have raised concerns about the move as well, including some high-profile names like Christopher Nolan and the production company Legendary Entertainment. The company is co-financing two upcoming films in Warner Brothers' lineup, Dune and Godzilla vs. Kong. And sources have told Variety that Legendary is trying to renegotiate for a stronger deal with Warner Brothers, but if that doesn't work out, legal action hasn't been ruled out. We'll of course be keeping a close eye on those talks and we'll update you if and when we hear more. But it seems clear that the movie industry is still coming to grips with the HBO Max decision, and it'll be interesting to see how this all plays out as we head into 2021. Next up, Viacom CBS continues to tweak and update its streaming offerings ahead of the rebranding and relaunch of CBS All Access next year when it transforms into Paramount+. Plus. This week, the company announced some kid-friendly features and programming coming to the current CBS All Access service. Among the new features is the ability to create up to six profiles per account, and parents can manage those profiles via a kids mode that can filter content based on ratings for younger audiences. The service will also add more family-friendly content from Nickelodeon and Nick Jr., including some 800 more episodes of Dora the Explorer and Blue's Clues. And of course, Viacom CBS has some grand plans in place for CBS All Access, including that big rebrand, of course, next year. So improving and upgrading its family-oriented features and content should help the company broaden its appeal as it nears that big revamp. Speaking of broadening its appeal, CBS All Access has also been made available on Comcast Xfinity X1 platform. That move makes Comcast the first pay TV provider to offer Viacom CBS a streaming service. And as Comcast pointed out in a blog post this week, that means X1 users now have access to some 20,000 movies and TV episodes, including new shows like Star Trek Discovery and Star Trek Picard. X1 users should be able to access the service via their voice remote just by saying CBS All Access, though I imagine saying Paramount Plus will also work sometime in the near future. In any case, if you're an X1 user and you're checking out CBS All Access for the first time, let us know what you think so far in the comment section down below. And that about wraps up the week here at Cord Cutting Weekly. And yes, don't forget, if you need some shopping suggestions, we're more than happy to help at Cord Cutters News. And we'll include a link to our holiday deals hub down below in the video description. And as always, if you are new here, please do consider clicking on those like and subscribe buttons down below, and maybe even that bell icon. That way, you won't miss out on our regular schedule of videos on our channel. On Wednesdays, Jess hosts our live Q&A session, and then on Thursday, we dive deep into specific categories, like this week's review of the Roku Stream Bar. And of course, there's our weekly news wrap-up, Cord Cutting Weekly, on Fridays. For now, though, my name is Philip Palermo, and I hope you have a safe and wonderful weekend. Thanks again for tuning in. Take care.